All right, Jordan. Hey, welcome back, man. It's good to be back, John. So, uh, yeah, what last week we had November 4th, the first uh, part of our November 4th ride, which was with Leonard, uh, Leonard Nout with MobyCon. Uh, he was gracious enough to take us on the uh, the good, the bad and the ugly tour. <laughs> and it was it was a hoot, uh, but uh, he had to get back to work. And so uh, he he left us to, to go explore. And uh, so that's what we have now is is we have the latter half of our November 4th uh, exploration. And uh, I, I think we should just like kick this off and then I'll, I'll let you kind of share a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the observations that you had from uh, last week's video with, with Leonard, as well as uh, what we ended up experiencing on our own here. So uh, I'll turn it over to you, man. What did you think about that whole uh, early morning? Because this was your first time to be in Utrecht. I mean, I, I've been there multiple times. What did you think? Yeah, that's right. I don't think we could have had a better guide um, to take us around than than Leonard. So that was pretty awesome. And uh, I was able to tune in for, for a good chunk of that the second time around. Obviously, I remember being there, but um, yeah, it, that was pretty great. Um, it was It's so fun to see a place like Utrecht that already has such an amazing level of bikeability still doing work and expensive work to make things work better um, and more smoothly and figure out what the pain points are and address them. So it was inspiring to me. And I, I really dug the fact that, you know, he took us to places that I had never been to in Utrecht. And, and, and again, yeah. I've been there multiple, multiple times with multiple uh, study tours, as well as uh, multiple times of just exploring it on my own. So it was really, really cool to just kind of uh, uh, see some stretches that I had never visited. And I really dug the rural parts, too. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, no question. That, that was probably one of the best parts of the day is mm-hmm. first of all just how short of time it took to get there right. um but also just how pleasant it was yeah yeah so here we are we're <laughs> we're we're we've now off exploring on our own and uh we can kind of see uh with the uh the this rather interesting and unique building um yeah. in front of us here so we're heading back towards the central station area and uh, and then eventually we're going to make our way into the old historic core of the city because you hadn't yet seen that. Uh, go ahead and, and reflect upon a little bit of, you know, having left uh, Leonard, now we're on our own. What are, what are some of your uh, thoughts, you know, coming back and memories of this experience? Well, um, I, I was just trying to imagine what it looked like before they kind of re- redid this whole stretch. Um, because it's still a pretty bustling, um, still pretty car heavy stretch through here. Um, but it works, but I know that that wasn't the case, uh, until pretty recently, like it, it didn't look like this until pretty recently. So that was one of the first things. And I think we're, are we about to go over across the, the canal where they've, um, daylighted it? Is that what we are about yeah. to happen here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of your favorite spots in the whole city. Well, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, uh, we're going to go over this little bridge right here and uh, then we'll take a right and get on to the other side of the canal. And of course, this is the famous canal that, uh, you know, was a canal. Then they turned it into a highway and then they turned it back into a canal. (laughs) And so this little stretch right here is a a fantastic area that I can remember seeing uh, on multiple trips dating back to 2015, 2018 and 2019. And so uh, in 2018, I can remember when this was still uh, under construction and they had just dug it back out again, but there was no water in the canal. And then 2019, when I was there, the water was in, but none of this landscaping had been done. But this is just, uh, you know, super extraordinary, you know, from the perspective of knowing that this used to be an ugly, noisy, polluting highway. This is so cool because we're seeing people actually enjoying it. Uh, This is your first time seeing uh, this, but you had heard about this canal uh, time and time again. What were some of your observations and thoughts from this? Yeah, um, some of them are going to be very obvious. This is really pleasant and lovely and obviously an amenity. 
for the people who live and, and work along here, as opposed to being sort of a nuisance that you want to shield and cover up the noise from and maybe maybe seek respite from because it's you know ugly and noisy. And now this is a place that like you there's value in being near. So obviously that was amazing. It sort of felt like it always was this way or always should have been this way. Um, yeah, nothing groundbreaking. This is just like a uh, textbook, good decision, <laughs> good yeah. urban decision right here. Yeah. Well, and it's it, the context of, you know, the, the canal having been destroyed and having it converted to a highway, uh, you know, there's, there's some relevance to that context because there were other cities in the Netherlands that, you know, this was, you know, considered, you know, there was like, oh, these canals are so old fashioned. Let's turn that into car parking or let's turn that into motor vehicle lanes. And, you know, that proposal had been put forth in, in the, the Netherlands or excuse me, in Amsterdam. And they fought vehemently from having that happen. Uh, it did happen here. And fortunately, it got reversed. So it was a devastating and drastic decision that it was wonderful to see that they had learned from it and decided to convert right. it back. So, so we're, have, we're, you, have you have you seen or, or heard any like of the impact of converting it back in terms of traffic? People tend to get worried about where's the traffic going to go once you eliminate i don't really know what their if they had any alternative routes or whatever or if they just allowed some of the traffic to evaporate yeah i mean it was so long ago that it was uh stopped i mean it was back in i think the 1990s when it was finally you know killed so it saw it that area just sat you know for many many years so by the way we're heading now into the the historic core of the city so now you can just tell the the whole scale looks a little bit different and even compared to what we had been experiencing with our tour with leonard uh this is is quite different and the thing that that you know i'm reflecting on is the fact that we're seeing parking garages right to the exterior of, um, you know, the, the historic core. So we're going to, we're going to turn and, and go dive into the core, but this was kind of cool to see, oh, okay. we got some parking structures that are here. And now we start going into, into the historic core. Uh, and again, this is your first time, you know, experiencing, you know, these neighborhoods, um, similar scale in terms of the streets that we experienced in some of the other cities. Yeah, I mean, they st still make still make space for everybody, all different types of users, even cars and delivery trucks, but all pretty slow, all pretty pleasant. Yeah, and you notice that, you know, motor vehicles are allowed through this space, but you can just tell that they're all moving at very, very ultra slow speeds. Uh, we're now on a stretch here that is actually uh, bike and ped only. And so, um, and in fact, we, we were walking, I think it actually did say um, in this particular portion of it, we were, yeah. uh, pedestrian only. So yeah. we were walking much our bikes through here. Yeah. Yeah. And you can tell that, you know, nobody, nobody comes here anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's obviously no way to get to the businesses. Yeah. It really sucks to not have that parking. Yeah. And we're rolling past uh, one of the historic uh, oldest churches in the area and in this segment and just diving deeper into uh, into this old historic portion of the city and, uh, you know, riding on some beautiful brick paved roads. Mm hmm. Yeah. More more bumpy streets, just like uh, like back like we're back in Brussels almost. Not quite as bumpy. <laughs> No, it wasn't that bumpy. I mean, uh, there were sections ballers. that were that bumpy, but, you know, for the most part, these bricks were very, very uh, comfortable to ride on. It, now that in retrospect, looking back at this, I really probably should have dropped my PSIs down a little bit, the tire pressure, just a little, <laughs> but it was, it was still quite comfortable. Yeah. And you were, you were leading the way. So, you know, yeah, look at me navigating. go. Yeah. <laughs> let's go this way I'm such a natural <laughs> but yeah talk a little bit about that I mean that's one of the questions that came up from uh, one of the viewers of our last video was you know how easy did it was it for us to just navigate and find our way around the, the city 
Well, that's a good question. I mean, we had usually the aid of Google Maps and how helpful that was, you know, depended on the city and where we were and how much it wanted to dump us into the busier streets. Um, maybe part of the part of what worked was that we were just wandering around a lot of the time. And most of the streets were just low stress enough that you could kind of do that and and be taking it all in at the same time as you're just trying to figure it out. Um, we saw a few streets that were more like, all right, let's just keep with the traffic here and figure out our directions somewhere else. But I mean, as you can observe, so much of this is um, low stress enough that we could at any point pretty much stop and figure out where we're going. Yeah. I mean, it's why, you know, it's, it's a little bit trickier than the streets are older and windier and they're not all at right angles and that's cool. <laughs> I think actually that's like a, one of the things that makes, um, a, a place like Utrecht so beautiful is like the one we're on here. You can see the vista in the end, it's, you know, it's got this gentle bend in it. Um, and it gives a little bit of mystery about what's around the corner and, these older cities do a great job of that, whether intentionally or not. Like that's just sort of a core piece of what makes these cities really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I made an uh, a point of uh, of pointing out that yes, we're on a very high quality feet strut here, and so this would be a Super thirty kilometer per hour zone. And yes, there are motor vehicles here, but for the most part, we're super super comfortable on this stretch. Yeah, this type of paving was real smooth and and kind of nicer to be on even than those those bricks. Yeah. Yeah. And we're rolling past one of the grocery stores right here, so you know that uh is a you know a key feature of the fact that yeah, you see, you know, families with cargo bikes, you know, going to the grocery store as well as, you know, n you know people on normal bikes popping into the grocery store but you're not seeing, you know, that massive amount of parking. So in the previous video, when we were with, uh, with Leonard, we went past a couple of grocery stores and markets where there was lots of car parking here. There was absolutely zero car parking really. And it was, you know, just a space for as many, uh, you know, places for, for people with bikes to park. Yeah. And you would see those periodic raised crossings for people on foot, plenty of kind of gentle curb cuts that are easy to get up, get off your bike onto the sidewalk area on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So do you know what happened here? What happened here? Look, look, look in the screen here. What, what, what is that? What's that? Is this where we stopped and I fed my urge for more fried dough? <laughs> I think that <laughs> exactly. is what's about to happen. Uh, share, share your experience. <laughs> what, what, what was that all about? Uh, well, it's fall in the Netherlands and since it's fall in the Netherlands, you're obligated to find any one of these stands selling Oli Bolin yes. and, uh, buy a fried ball, do, do, fried ball of dough for like a Euro Yeah, and you can get it with or without raisins. Some people have a, seem to have a phobia of raisins, but in, <laughs> and they sprinkle powdered sugar on it and it's, it's the best. And it's the best. Did you, Very did you have raisins or not? I, I did some of each. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. I, uh, I abstained, um, you know, I was yeah. <laughs> watching my waist, you know, trying to save my, my <laughs> yeah. carbs for my beer. Watching your figure. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but again, so, uh, we're, we're, you know, heading down the street here, you know, from that little square area where that was. And again, we see some motor vehicles trying to do some, uh, you know, drivers who are trying to do some, you know, crucial things, maybe a delivery of some sort, but again, nobody's all that concerned with it. It's all super, super low speeds and, uh, yeah. And off we go. And We're for the most part, like even, even the places where their curbs are so low that like in certain situations, like a, you know, a delivery vehicle could make use of that extra space. It's, it's, well, it stands out to me. It's how adaptable the space is while still being clear like what, what space is for who and what space is for, you know, intermingling. Yeah. 
And this, we're coming up to a segment here. This is one of my favorite areas of the city. It, you've got these no be- the beautiful architecture. And off to the left here, we've got the canal. Uh, and you just, you have this classic visual of all the bikes uh, lined up along the canal. It's just so gorgeous. I mean, and how amazing is it that this is where you have this sort of two level canal situation with the trees planted below. So you're walking along the canal, but also kind of in the, you know, in the treetops at the same time or along them. Right. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I can't remember if it was in 2018 or 2019, but, uh, I actually attended a couple meetings in one of the buildings right along this stretch. And so it was like, oh, this is cool. I've been here. <laughs> it's nice having that level of familiarity. And then you're like, oh yeah, this is really, really cool. And, and clearly again, this is a Friday. Uh, this is midday on Friday and you just see the vibrancy. And and I think that's worth repeating is that, you know, when you create people oriented places, people show up. Yeah, no question. I mean, it, this was a, a place that you just want to, you just want to show up, like you said, and linger and watch other people. But yeah, I think you were just saying, uh, you know, Jordan, that, you know, (laughs) this level of vibrancy and, and people just really enjoying, uh, you know, the space and, and it's just so extraordinary. I mean, why wouldn't every city want to have this level of vitality and vibrancy? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's inviting for businesses to want to set up shop there, um, offices, it's just a, it's a draw rather than like we were talking about before, rather than being a thing that you want to shield from and get away from. Yeah. Yeah. And streets and, could be like, all of our streets could be like that. I mean, or, yeah. or, or most of them. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and when you look at this, I mean, you know, we're looking at some of these streets are, are, are fairly busy and wider mm-hmm. like this one here. Um, But, and then others, you know, we turn the corner and we're on a very, very narrow and delightful street and everything's very calm and slow. Yeah. So there's that combination of a little bit of both. Yeah. This is probably one of the ones where you want to be a little bit uh, more sure of where you're going. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. But even so you've, you know, you've got your own space and it's, you're not quite as much fighting with cars. Yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got a, a construction area here. We're actually heading uh, back uh, past the, uh, the central station area once yeah. again. And we're going to uh, actually pass by some of the areas uh, that we were in with Leonard first thing in the morning after we met with him. We pass under this little, you know, bridge area here and... Uh, And then we go past that section where he was talking about how that canal, that same canal is going to be, you know, extended through uh, this area. I think one of the things Mm. that he said that I chuckled about was that you you be able to paddle your uh, your boat or your kayak all the way through. (laughs) That sounds like a lot of fun. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's one way to get to work, I guess. Yeah. And so we're, we're actually going to, uh, we're going to tread over some of the same, uh, ground that we were, uh, that we rode through with him, but then we're going to continue on and, uh, it, and really kind of explore a little bit more, uh, this other part of the city. Uh, again, it's areas that I had seen multiple times, but this is all going to be new for you. And, uh, um, again, it's, it, this is neat because it's a little bit more of a built environment that feels a little bit more like a, a North American context, other than the fact that you've got the canal on the right, you've got this wonderful feet strut here yeah. that we're on, uh, but we're away from the, the historic city, you know, that we're away from that historic core. So it, this feels a little bit more North American in the sense that it's a little newer. Yeah, and the signalized intersections back there, um, kind of a little bit of familiarity for us. Although the the little beg button is a bit more responsive and also a bit better positioned. I, the, yeah. We've talked about that before. I think they're they're good about placing the the button in an actually <laughs> you know usable uh, spot instead of just where the pole happens to be. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's a beautiful historic, you know, kind of older, you know, building here, the you know, restaurant, you've got the, the oh, beautiful wind, windmill here and, and all that. Uh, and just beautiful willows too, right along the water. Um, yep. but and we're just kind of, you know, continuing on. I love these little bridges. We're going to see several of these little, uh, draw bridge type, uh, structures, you know, in this particular area. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts of town. Yeah. I these are it. always a delight to ride over. Yeah. These bridges. And, and, and we also starting to see some houseboats here too. So we actually see that those are, you know, some residences here. Wonder what it would be like to, to live in that. <laughs> I bet you we could yeah. find an Airbnb, uh, you know, in a little houseboat. <laughs> Sometimes the cheapest ones were those, were rooms in those, those houses. Oh yeah. You, yeah. you, you kind of looked at into that, right? Yeah. I just love the, you know, the, the light, the reflection on the water. And, uh, it's just so still. Very I'm just great. fascinated by like when the, when the, like when those got there and if they were grandfathered in or if pe people are adding new ones out there right now, it's just a, it, an odd sort of, you'd think public space, but, but like taken up by private housing. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, and I, I, and I, I would, I, I'm confident that uh, we have some viewers that uh, uh, from yes, the Netherlands that could know. probably fill that in. Yeah, please let us know. I don't want to Google search it. Let yeah. us know. Yeah, let us know. You're also starting to notice here too, as we're getting into the early afternoon, it seems like a lot more uh, kids are getting out of school and, and are riding through the area. So that's, uh, as we continue um, along this pathway here, I, I just start noticing that we're seeing more and more students, uh, you know, getting ready for the weekend. Cause again, this is mm -hmm. an early Friday afternoon. Yep. And again, on a street like this, like how many places in the, in the U S or North America, would we have this, have the level of comfort to have streets this narrow, you know? Yeah. That are fairly busy, in terms of, you know, there's residences all along here. Right. And there's, you know, as we just noted, you know, there's plenty of, uh, of, of parking, you know, there. So we're, plenty of parking. we're not, we're not feeling constrained by the, mm -hmm. the cars that are parked in that area. In fact, we are nowhere near the door zone. So we're in a nice safe area. Uh, there was a little bit of a buffer there and, uh, yeah, I mean, very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. A lower impact, a lot less pavement use, mm -hmm. a lot, lot less runoff. Yeah. And we're actually making our way over to um, uh, the school that has the the bridge, <laughs> uh, the Daphne Schipper Bridge. School of the bridge, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is this is really really special, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll be able to get to see this. And this was fun too because I'd never approached it from this angle before, and uh, I, I like the sort of the route that we took because it was a little bit different. Yeah. And that could have been streets going that that you know corner of the building we just went around could have been a couple of streets there but like they just decided to not do that <laughs> and yeah. i love it yeah and again we're, we're in a very very dense uh residential area and when i say dense i'm just thinking of the the density and the number of cars that we're seeing you know parked in this, mm -hmm. this particular area here but it's still a, a nice you know red paved feet strut area super super comfortable you know, riding through here. And again, we're not seeing any impatience really of any of the motor vehicle drivers as we're rolling through here. And you can also see some of the traffic calming uh, elements that they have. Yep. Yep. These little bump outs. Yep. Uh, certainly help. And I, I, I dig this too. I like this little, you know, we've got these trees right here in the middle and we uh -huh. sort of split the road spritz, splits into two, yep. two sides here. And I just, I, I love that a little segment right there. Again, anytime I can have trees in the middle of, of the street, I'm all for yeah, it. Yeah, I'm with you. 
<laughs> and so we could actually see in the distance here, we can see a little bit of the, the structure oh, of right. the bridge uh, poking up. And uh, we could have, you know, gone straight forward, it, but we're, it looked we're like actually we had gonna... the uh, we had the ability to to stop a bit further ahead of where the cars had to stop right. on that place where we were all together. Just yeah. want to point that out for yeah. giving us a little bit of a head start. Yeah, that's you're absolutely right. Yeah, and the route that we're taking uh, to make our way over to the bridge, we're actually going to roll right past the school and then loop around the school before accessing the uh, the cycle path that then goes and winds its way onto the roof of the school. And so I, I, I just, I'm kind of tickled that we sort of fell into this particular route because it's, a, again, it's a route that I hadn't uh, seen before and hadn't taken before, although I've been on this bridge and this, you know, route and the, at the school <laughs> multiple, multiple times, so... Well, I was trying to delight you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And now we have a, a, a nice visual. There's the there's the bridge itself. And there's the river that the, the bridge is, you know, getting us over. And then we off to the right here, we can see the school. And you'll notice the dots here. This is also sort of a visual element. Uh, this is something that uh, Hert van Wilt, uh, you know, pointed out to me is that one of the the school area zone things that they do treatment are those little dots just to try to you know alert again drivers. Hey, heads up, we're going past a school zone. You can see this school zone here and the bike parking off to the right. And now we are going to make our way over to the cycle path that goes up onto the school. And again, this is kind of a, a new route for, you know, it's not the normal route to get to the, the actual cycle path. So we're just kind of making our way over there. But I like this because we were able to uh, just get a different view of it. And that's the, the view that I wanted to see. Yeah, that was kind of cool catching that. A neat angle. Yeah. It's like a we're... We're, we're uh, taking a big um, spiral <laughs> all the way in around yeah. here. Yeah. So this is your first time on this one. What'd you think? Yeah. Uh, no, it was awesome. Like you can see how this would have been a real design challenge for them. And I can imagine them taking multiple iterations to figure out how this works. But, you know, you have to build in this nice long winding path to get it be, to be a you know, a usable angle that's not too difficult to get up. Um, but wow, I mean, pretty great use of space. Obviously, it's a beautiful way to get there. Yeah. Looking back down. And we're going to actually uh, stop on the bridge and we'll chat a little bit up there. We actually might have... Vi uh, uh, some audio to that. So I'll turn the audio up on, on our thing. I can't remember if I kept that in there or not. Uh, then we'll turn around and we'll actually go back down. So I, I thought it'd be fun to, for you to experience it, you know, going up and then also, you know, heading right. back down. So we get a good picture once we're up here of just how far the next crossing is from here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we were actually not far from that uh, yellow bridge when we were riding with, with Leonard. So. And then in my previous rides, I'd, I'd ridden on multiple other bridges, including a bridge in this direction as well. It's, it's crazy how they knew that anyone would want to, want to use this since no one was swimming yeah. across to begin with. And yeah. The school, this, this elementary school um, and the bridge, Daphne Shipmere Bridge, um, is now a critical connector for the kids who are um, going into these, these new developments, these new housing. They're going to be able to go to this school right here that we just rode on. Yeah. So this was a major, major priority was to, to be able to put in a bike and pedestrian bridge to connect these two communities together. And as the city expands to this other side, 
they didn't want this, you know, these neighborhoods to be car dependent. And so it was super, super important that they were able to build, you know, this bike and pedestrian bridge. And I just love that, you know, that whole time we were up there, it was just, you know, people going, you know, the, not, not just parents and students, but just, you know, plenty of kids on their own, but it was just, it was so cool to see how much of a, a functional utilitarian purpose. And, you know, this is a key connector, uh, you know, for these communities. So, yeah, I could totally thumbs up, man. Way, way, way yeah. to go to, per, you know, prioritize getting that in. You just see all of the, you know, the students and the kids just making it up. Yeah. I love this project because it just demonstrates how much creativity like we have in us and how, you know, how good we are at solving problems if we're willing to be like, well, let's do something a little bit different than we typically do. Like, yeah. this is great. This is like transportation, but it's also, I would have to imagine a lot of fun for kids coming to school this way. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's looks nice to watch people going down that winding path. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just how cool is it, you know, to be like, yeah, there's people riding on, on a roof. Yeah. Of our school. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, I mean, I, I'm just tickled by it. I, I think it's so cool. And you're absolutely right. I mean, it shows that with a little bit of innovation and, you know, putting your thinking cap on and doing some problem solving, you could, we can do amazing things as, as human beings when we set our mind to it. So good stuff. And, and again, just the flow, you know, the constant flow of, uh, of folks, you know, the students and, and people, you know, getting home. Got to get that weekend started. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are at these, uh, these little, let me let me ride buttons. Uh, yeah. Have we pointed out before the the black and white stripes on those are intended to make them stand out more in the day uh, or the night? You time? you just did. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's as far as I understand it. That's why they're yeah. like that. Yeah. And so we're 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 now kind of winding down. We're we're making our way. Uh, you know back towards the, uh, the, the center area or the, the main business district area and, uh, and then making our way back to the central station. Cause this is, you know, this is it. I mean, this is the, the end of our, our day. Uh, so why don't we just take this opportunity and reflect, man. It's like, this is, this is a big day for you. The first time you had had the opportunity to really experience Utrecht. Yeah. I, I think it was just too short, you know, it would have been nice to have spent a f few days here because obviously the central area, the design is just pretty spectacular. And, um, and also it's, it's clear that they really care about, um, continuously improving the experience for people on bikes, yeah. um, throughout here. And, yeah. um, Oh, somebody going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I'm going to pause like this here just for a second, just to, to point out, um, I had panned over to the left a couple of times to point out that that's actually a bus rapid transit lane in there in the middle. And in so this was obviously a, a wide road that had previously, you know, gone through a series of road diets. Now there's only one lane of motor vehicle traffic, you know, in each direction. And then the center lane, there are, uh, the, the bus only lanes. And so you'll see a, a little bit of, you'll see, you know, some transit stop areas, and then eventually we'll see some buses running there. So this is a high capacity, uh, bus yeah. version uh, of, you know, you know, this, that concept of transit instead of, you know, putting in a streetcar line. Yeah. And just like, uh, I think it was Leonard was pointing out, um, in the previous video, it, like you said, it's why there's a lots of lanes of traffic of one type or another, but it's broken up pretty nicely, um, in between each so that passing through as a pedestrian, um, there were those kind of rest stop points where you could go a lane, wait for more traffic to go. And so it wasn't like doing it all at one, one go. Yeah. Of course, yeah. you're not really supposed to do that here. It looks like, but 
Yeah. And it looks like uh, now that the, the, the path I believe is now bi-directional in, in this yeah. segment here. So I think we are in that. And, and coming up here too, um, off to the right, we actually have a, a, a wound earth that comes up, but we're going to first see this transit stop here. So that's a, a good example of transit stop mm-hmm. structure there for the, the bus. Little floating island. It, yeah. Yep, exactly. But uh, yeah, it was just, I was fascinated by this, this little area here and you can see the, the combination, you know, off to the right, we've got some car parking and we've got sort of a shared street or, you know, a slow street area. You can see the bus coming through in the, in in that bus only lane Mm -hmm. there. And so uh, the bus is not stopped in traffic. It's just a good, it's a good um, illustration of how, you know, how they don't like to mix even the same type of vehicle, like vastly different speeds. So you've right. got the lane for your through traffic and you have the lane for people coming and going and parking. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we can see, you know, we've got these little quiet streets off to here and get some construction going on. It looks like it's mostly you get some some businesses on the on the first floor, but you also see this and boom, there you go. That is a wooner over there. So in that street, I'm, I'm fortunately, I'm sorry, I didn't get a, a better um, image of this area, this particular street. But this is an example like Leonard had pointed out to us is that, uh, you know, they do have some of these woonerfs where there are, you know, there's there's no uh, there's no curbs to that. And then the next street over is going to be more of like a standard street where there's actually, a, you know, a curb and and a, a, a pedestrian space. So is that what that sign meant? Uh, yeah, the sign with a. Yeah. Yeah. And so th- then you have this street where there's a, a little bit more defined pedestrian space. So kind of cool. Maybe we should start putting up signs like that on streets yeah. in our yeah, neighborhoods. Just, just do it. Yeah. Well, in, in my, in my, you know, neighborhood here, again, we, we don't have any, uh, sidewalks, so it, it is a shared space. So yeah, maybe Mm -hmm. put one of those, Hey, this is an all people and all play ball here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Play ball here, <laughs> and I love these buses. If you notice how long they are, the really, really long yep. articulated buses. Again, um, you know, for North American purposes, if you're not going to be able to get that, uh, you know, high quality streetcar line in, again, creating some space and having a a, a place where you can uh, put in a, you know, a, a bus only lane, one in each direction and, you know, get that rapid transit, get them out of the, the, the challenging areas. I paused on yeah. this just really quickly so that we can point out that this is actually that area where we started the day off with Leonard and he was talking about the, uh, the canal being redone. And so that, that little colorful building there is sort of that, mm-hmm. that little pop-up area. And that's where the canal is going to be reestablished. Awesome. And then back into where the, the high rises are and then heading back into the, uh, the central station. Come around the corner here. And I love how, you know, there, there's just this, You've got all of these, you know, bikes coming in from different angles and everything. And because we're going at, you know, this very, very doable, comfortable speed, it's amazing how many people you can get through here, which is, you know, one of the the main points that that Leonard was making when we were talking about at that one, uh, you know, that one intersection, that one roundabout. And we're like, well, how many more people are, you know, are are on that long corridor? It's like, yeah, you can get a lot of people through an area, uh, mainly because you can, you know, people are pretty comfortable. You don't have to have that distance that you have to have when you're in a car. Yeah, I would. I would say it also helps that most people seem to be really good at riding slowly, like yes. almost to a standstill, which I think is a thing that people who aren't as practiced have trouble with. And then you're kind of catching yourself and struggling to get started. 
And a lot of those places you saw where, you know, we've got to stop before we get to the crossing and then there's a little, you know, space to stop after that before you cross the street. Um, I don't know. I, I think it helped that people were really good at at navigating <laughs> it, you know, slowing down almost yeah. to a stop, but not quite, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah. and you know, the, the, it's a good point too, that it helps when you're on a bike that is super, super comfortable at slow speeds. Yeah. So that yeah. typical upright Dutch bike is, is much easier to, to be able to navigate at super slow speeds. You know, if I'm on my racing bike, you know, it's a little bit more quirky, you know, it's like, no, it, it's, it's a little harder to, to be comfortable at super, super slow speeds. But if I'm on my daily commuter bike, uh, it's, it's more of an upright style and, and super, super relaxed. It's easier to go super slow. Um, my mountain bike, same thing. I can go, I can basically, you know, be very, very, you know, slow and be able to you know, mm -hmm. navigate. So depending on the, the geometry of a bike too, really helps being able to, to do that. And that Dutch bike, you know, feel of upright and being able to, you know, be really close to folks and, and be able to see peripheral yeah. uh, vision uh, really helps. Helps with those little uh, uh, body language communications and nudges and yeah. Oh, I'm heading here. Okay, good. So yeah, I think that was one of the cool things that that I noticed too was how much of the subtle body language of sometimes you're just mm -hmm. kind of indicating with your head or whatever. But like you said, the bikes are also comfortable enough that. You know, sometimes on on uh, like a more of a road bike, it can be can feel a little bit less stable to move your, you know, use your arms and signal. And yeah, yeah, a little bit easier on those upright styles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed, um, you know, going back down memory lane here in the yeah, uh, in our afternoon always. in Utrecht. And uh, hey, thank you so very much for, for doing this. Uh, any final, final thoughts? My final thoughts are. Uh, please thank John for the magic of editing. You don't see our tef technical difficulties and in the <laughs> pulling hair out from having just, internet. Just issues. a wee bit today. <laughs> Visit well, Utrecht. That's yes, my final thought. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Well, seriously though, thank you so very much, Jordan. I, I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, I, it's been a great deal of fun for me to relive these. We have a few more days, uh, because you, this was, uh, November 4th, uh, you end up departing on November 9th. And so we do have a few more days. We've got a few surprising, uh, cameo visits, you know, coming up, including, uh, yeah. Mark Wagenberg. We're going to go see him and, Long uh, yeah, yeah. So long awaited. We'll make it down to Dimbosh and, and see him. So, uh, yeah, again, thank you so very much for doing this. And uh, until next time. All right. Thanks for having me back. And if he's listening, thanks to Leonard for showing us around uh, Utrecht in the morning. That was awesome. Yeah, here, here. <laughs> All right, cool. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> See you, John. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode <laughs> of Utrecht uh, in the afternoon with Jordan. Uh, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below. And uh, once again, if you haven't already done so, um, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a great deal. And it's such a pleasure and honor to produce this content for you and uh, bring it into your little screens. And I wanted to bring this up. Uh, obviously, a, a big part of Active Towns is trying to promote uh, you know, being able to create cities, create neighborhoods and communities that encourage healthy, active living. And so, uh, although I love having you guys watching this content, uh, what I would love even more is if this inspires you to get out and, uh, you know, explore your own communities, be able to uh, get out on the bike and, and go for a walk and, you know, grab a friend and do it as well. And uh, really, I hope this also inspires you to be able to do what you can uh, to really help transform your communities into more uh, people-oriented places, more active places. And, uh, and again, we, we talk a little bit about that on the podcast, about what you know, those strategies can be to be able to get your communities uh, you know, heading in that direction. So again, thank you so very much for your attention and for tuning in and doing whatever you can to help transform your communities into uh, more activity-friendly places, more 
active towns. Uh, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.